keynote speaker, Kevin Avaki. He is the founder and self-described quadratic spokes meme at Gitcoin, as well as a general open source supporter and evangelist. Kevin will speak to us about the history of quadratic funding on one of the most mature public funding platforms in Web3. Welcome, Kevin. Hey, hey, Carla, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. All right, and I hope you all can see my screen now as well. Yes. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for having me, and thanks so much to Filecoin for hosting this really amazing event. My title, uh, the title of my talk is Reimagining the Future of Public Goods with Quadratic Funding on Gitcoin Grants. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Gitcoin Grants and Quadratic Funding. I'm going to tell you about Gitcoin Grants history running at 12 rounds of Quadratic Funding. And then we'll end with some thoughts about the future of Quadratic Funding, the mechanism, what we've learned, and also how that intersects with Gitcoin's uh, mission. So our mission is to build and fund digital public goods. We want to empower communities of builders to work together to create the future of the open web. Uh, that means supporting the open internet with open economies. And if we are successful, we will create many quadratic freelancers, people who have just quit their job and are working on the open internet or just come out of school and working on the open internet. So what we do at Gitcoin is we build Web3 ecosystems. We have a suite of products that help you onboard and retain builders into your Web3 ecosystem. So primarily a uh, tool called Gitcoin Kernel, which is one of the top accelerators, incubators in the space for Web3 talent. We've got hackathons and we've also got Gitcoin grants. Um, and over time, we have deployed about $40 million worth of funding for open source software, accelerating in the last few quarters to about $6 million per quarter, mostly through Gitcoin grants. And that's what I want to talk about with you today. So Gitcoin grants is a way to get community support and match funds for public goods projects. And it's just basically a crowdfunding platform that its superpower is quadratic funding. So uh, I did not invent quadratic funding. Glenn Weil, Vitalik Buterin, Zoe Hitzig, it was their idea. And I like to think of us as just kind of like the B2C hipsters that have put it in front of people all across the web in the Ethereum ecosystem. And it's really quadratic funding that is this really special mechanism that allows Gitcoin grants to thrive. And I want to break out of my presentation really quick in order to talk about what is quadratic funding? And I want to show off this little calculator that we built at Gitcoin called WTF is QF, because we think that the paper by Glenn Vitalik and Zoe is really amazing, but um, it, a lot of people don't want to read a 30 page paper. And our goal is to explain what is quadratic funding using this site, as opposed to um, having to read the whole paper. So what makes quadratic funding really powerful is that on Gitcoin grants, we're doing about a million dollar matching rounds every quarter and deploying them contemporaneously with a crowdfunding campaign, wherein inside of the crowdfunding campaign, uh, if one grant gets $1,000 from 1,000 contributors and another grant gets $1,000 from one contributor, then what's going to happen is that the first grant will get way, way, way more of the matching pool. And that's because a broader swath of the community is supporting that first grant. And what's really powerful about this is that it creates this incentive to get over the free rider problem. Because for every dollar that you're giving, you're giving, you're getting between 10x or 300x matching for every contribution that you're giving as a everyday member of the community. And so what this does is the 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 number of contributors matters more than the amount funded. And this pushes power to the edges away from whales and other central power brokers. And it creates more democracy in public goods funding, which is what we want. We want public goods funding and we want more democracy. So that is why quadratic funding is such a magical, magical mechanism. And that is why we are so thankful to Glenn, Vitalik and Zoe for inventing it so that we can deploy it on Gitcoin grants.
which I want to tell you a little bit about the growth of Gitcoin grants over time next. So um, we started off running our first experiment in quadratic funding in Q1 of 2019. ETH had just hit the bottom of its bear market, and we were able to raise $40,000 through 200 contributions at that time. On the right-hand side of my screen over here is a view of the what I call the matching contribution graph for that round. So basically every node in this network is a user or a grant and every edge is a transaction on the system during that grant. So you can see the preference map. The whole point of quadratic funding is measuring the preferences of the community and which public goods the actual community cares about. And when you get that preference map, you can see how densely and from what parts of the community the each public good is funding. So I'm just gonna roll through a little bit of a, a of, of the history of the round so that you can see the growth of that preference map and how we're supporting public goods to round two, where we raised 60K in Q2 of 2019 to round three, in which we raised, uh, not we, but we in conjunction with the community raised $300,000. And you can see the preference map here is getting denser. Round four. Um, oh, and the thing that we did in round three what, that I think was like a really important UX thing was we built in the UI a little thing that did the math for you in quadratic funding. So instead of you having to say, oh, I'm giving a dollar, how much will this grant get? We would say, oh, you're getting giving a dollar and you're going to get $100 from the matching pool, which just allowed the users to see the power of quadratic funding. And that was a core breakthrough for the UX of building quadratic funding. Um, round four, we did 350K and you can see the preference map is growing. Uh, Vitalik came up with this idea in round four of adding a media matching round. So up until round four, we were only doing open source contributions. And when we added a media matching round, it stirred up all these interesting conversations like our Twitter accounts creating public goods if they're fighting disinformation or creating journalism. But the really cool thing about the media round was that it pulled more contributors in to the quadratic funding round, which supported more of the open source software developers. Open source software developers do great work, but they don't have huge audiences. Media uh, and journalism is also a public good, but they have huge audiences. And that spillover effect of them entering the round created way more uh, for, for public goods funding on quadratic on Gitcoin grants. Round five, playing it forward, Q2 2020, uh, we expanded into experimenting with a public health matching fund, uh, herd immunity is a public good. And if you remember Q2 2020, we were all trying to figure out the coronavirus pandemic and uh, expanded into a health matching round that was moderately successful, raised 500K all in for open source media and uh, public health. Round six, um, we created this tool called Bulk Checkout. And basically what that did was it allowed us to go um, for, for you to add a bunch of grants to cart and then check out like 40 of them at a time. And that was a really important part of the user experience for getting people to contribute to more grants during their shopping experience. Um, round seven was the introduction of uh, layer two, which is basically a cheaper payment mechanism uh, for, for Gitcoin grants. The average contribution on Gitcoin grants is a dollar. And when we moved from layer one to layer two, now we could do very, very cheap transactions to all of the, the grants on Gitcoin. And again, you see the preference map and the amount of funding continuing to grow. Um, continuing through rounds eight, nine, and 10, we're getting into 2021 at this point. And you can see that the preference map, map is absolutely massive. Now we're raising over a million dollars for quadratic, with quadratic funding for the Ethereum community every quarter and continuing to focus on scalability, usability, and also civil resistance, which is basically one of the attack vectors of quadratic funding. And this is all culminated in round 11 with raising $2.5 million in the Ethereum community and 25,000 contributions. Or, uh, yes, 25,000 uh, contributions. So um, really, really proud of the uh, uh, of the growth of, of Gitcoin grants from when it started in January 2019 and how it's going in 2021, where we've basically got uh, 25K contributors and $2.5 million being raised. So uh, this is some of the stats and the growth of Gitcoin grants over time. The red line is the number of contribute uh, contributors. The green line is the crowdfund amount and the blue blue is the number of, of contributions round over round. So we've seen 
pretty solid growth as people have discovered that this is a mechanism that actually supports the infrastructure that, that they depend on in the space. Some of the grants that I am most proud of on Gitcoin grants are obviously the big hits, the greatest, you got to play the greatest hits, uh, Uniswap and Urine Finance during uh, round two, three, and four of Gitcoin grants were received between 20K and 130K from the community. Super proud that we supported them before they came the massive supernovas that they are today. Uh, I have, a, as a developer myself, I have a special place in my heart for open source clients. So that's ETH2 clients like Prismatic and Nimbus, but also, also front end clients like Ether's JS that have managed to raise tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars from Bitcoin grants. And then there's just the hearts and minds projects for me, guys like Austin Griffith, who are just doing a bunch of cool stuff and are well respected by their community. And Wallet Connect, I just think is this amazing protocol that I use almost all the time. And having them raise money from Gitcoin grants has been a real pleasure for me. Uh, we've also released a mechanism through which you can browse grants by what we're calling collections. Some of the causes that I care about are anti-civil technology, public goods, other public goods funding mechanisms, and then funding the journalists like Bankless, Daily Guay, uh, Camila Russo, those type of projects in the space that help fight disinformation and help get out the, create more understanding about what's going on in the Ethereum space. So, um, you know, I think that like, those are the quantitative stats. Qualitatively, I think that what we've heard from people like David Hoffman at Bankless is that the biggest thing that Gitcoin did for them was give them validation and to go full-time on Bankless. Um, we have seen um, Spencer Noon call Gitcoin Grant an underrated experiment in, in Web3. And I'm really super proud as someone who really looked up to Vitalik uh, to have him call Gitcoin Grants uh, establishing itself as a significant pillar of the Ethereum ecosystem that more and more projects are relying on for some or all uh, of their support. But I don't, uh, I, I want to come here sort of like everything on the table talking also about the unsolved issues that we have with, with Gitcoin Grants. Um, so there's a problem of civil and collusion resistance, which is basically like, if I can get more matching funds for my grants with more people contributing to them, why wouldn't I just make up identities? So there's kind of like a cat and mouse game where we're building new identity verification mechanisms to make it harder to make up new accounts and also making it harder for people, groups of people to collude with each other in order to get more of the matching pool. We do have a fraud and defense work stream in the Gitcoin DAO that has managed to estimate the fraud tax as fraud tax being the amount of money that goes to fraudsters that are civil attacking the system uh, over the amount of total that's raised in the, in the projects. The fraud tax is about 0.5% right now, between 0.5 and 1% over rounds 10 and 11. Um, there's a problem of Keynesian beauty contests, which is basically like, if you only fund the things that you see that are beautiful, then we're never gonna fund the deep plumbing in the space that sits behind the things that we see, that we know and love. Um, there's an ongoing question about credible neutrality and decentralization, which Gitcoin is paying down its centralization debt. I'll talk about that in a second here. And then there's an ongoing question of where do the matching funds come from? So basically you have to have a match pool to kick off the party every quarter. And where does that money come from? TLDR is that through rounds one through six, it came from the Ethereum Foundation. This is the bear market. No one was funding public goods. Rounds seven through 10, the market's turning around. You have alumni of Gitcoin grants like Yearn giving back to the matching pool. Andre from Yearn gave us 100K. Uh, and then everyone in DeFi, the cool thing to do was to give 100K to Gitcoin grants multi-sig. And so we saw a bunch of community funding for Gitcoin grants rounds seven through 10. And now we're experimenting with funding Gitcoin grants matching pool with NFTs. Gitcoin DAO recently did a $3 million NFT launch, which funds us roughly for three rounds for the matching pool. And I'm happy to say that we are funded for the next two and a half years of matching pools. And so we will be around, we will be around to be the pilot light of a pilot light of the ecosystem and public goods, even if there is a market downturn. And I think that that stability, as Vitalik said, is a very important thing for the ecosystem to be able to expect that there will be a Gitcoin Grants round. So I want to talk a little bit about the future of Gitcoin Grants, and then we can break for questions. The future of Gitcoin Grants is decentralized Gitcoin Grants, increasing our civil resistance, experimenting with taking quadratic funding mainstream. And then I want to talk a little bit about Grants Round 12, which is coming up. 
So on the first topic, uh, we are decentralizing Gitcoin. We released a token called GTC and launched Gitcoin DAO, which is the vessel through which we are decentralizing the governance, computation, development, and maybe one day if we have it, economics of the network to a DAO from a company. We are experimenting with liquid democracy, which is basically, we believe that consent of the governed is the only legitimate basis for governance in any space, but especially the Ethereum space. And we want it to be governed by our community. Um, but we recognize that most members of the Gitcoin community will not vote. And so we let them elect a representative who is well-informed and will vote for them. And I'm proud to be working with Linda Z, Austin Griffith, and Trent, and many other OGs of the Ethereum and Gitcoin ecosystem in order to govern Gitcoin grants in the future. Item number two that we're working on is civil resistance. Basically, we have aggregated a bunch of civil resistance tools from across the ecosystem. Proof of Humanity, Idena, Bright ID. We're also experimenting with using POAPs as civil resistance. And so we're kind of creating this like per proof of personhood passport that we're using initially on Gitcoin grants and are planning on building a decentralized version that anyone that has a civil resistance problem in the ecosystem can just in one, one line of code be able to integrate all of these different civil resistance tools and be able to like sign in with Ethereum and then the dApp knows that you're a unique person or that you're not a unique person. And I think that would be such an interesting thing for the Ethereum ecosystem for us to help knock down that civil resistance problem in partnership with, of course, all these other great civil resistance projects. Um, I imagine moving from a web that is one token, one vote, a web three token, one vote, uh, to one person, one vote. And I think that's fundamentally more democratic to enable that wave of innovation in the space. And I want to, I, I want Gitcoin to pay it forward and, and build more civil resistance in the ecosystem. We are experimenting with taking quadratic funding mainstream. We have done quadratic funding experiments in partnership with Open Collective in a project called Fund OSS in June 2021, where we raised 50K for Web2 open source software. Quadratic funding works outside of Ethereum. It's not just an Ethereum thing. And then we also did in May 2020, Downtown Stimulus, a quadratic funding experiment for downtown Boulder, Colorado. Comic book shops, coffee shops, restaurants, getting supported with quadratic funding. And we had a successful experiment supporting Boulder downtown using quadratic funding. It doesn't, and it scales outside of tech. Quadratic funding works on Main Street. We funded a comic book store using quadratic funding. So cool. Um, and then I want to leave you by talking about Grants Round 12, which is the next quadratic funding round that we are going to be doing. It is December 1st through December 16th. We are going to be running a main round of about 800K. We're going to be building Gitcoin DAO with Gitcoin with 25K uh, round. Uh, we're doing side rounds with Uniswap, probably Polygon, maybe Algorand and, and others. And then we're starting to do thematic rounds around climate change, advocacy, and longevity research. And so um, I'm just really excited to be funding public goods using uh, culture, quadratic funding, and Gitcoin grants. If you're interested in being involved in Grants Round 12 or want to run a side round for your ecosystem, we build crypto ecosystems and we'd, be, we'd love to talk to you. Please send me an email at founders at gitcoin.co if you're interested in getting involved. Um, thank you so much to Juan Benet and to Filecoin for having me today. Would be happy to break for the last few minutes and take some questions. Thanks, Kevin, for describing the grant pro program operating in the wild today. So we have a few questions from the chat, um, and I think I will go first. They centered around the the question of civil resistance, which you described, mm -hmm. and your approaches to combating it. One of them is the proof of personhood passport. And mm -hmm. Dave Mackey asks, how does this passport work for individuals who may need to maintain anonymity, like individuals in dictatorial regimes? Right, really great question. Um, so proof of passport, uh, personhood passport is something that is in alpha right now. It's only being used on Gitcoin. And one of the things that we believe is a non-negotiable as we move this forward is that it needs to be something that is privacy preserving. Um, and, you know, I think that the case for that is, is self-obvious. You know, you, you pointed out the risk of identity mechanisms and dictatorial re regimes. And um, basically what we see ourselves doing is, is taking the civil resistance mechanisms that already exist across the ecosystem, uh, 
And like, so things like POAP, where it doesn't know your identity or your, any personally identifiable information, stuff like Bright ID also doesn't know your personally identifiable information. Identa also doesn't know your personally identifiable information. Um, and then we aggregate them into one passport that basically like derives civil resistance from all those downstream mechanisms, and then only exposes your personhood score to the D app that uh, wants to know whether you're a unique human or not. So I think it's really important to build this in a privacy pre preserving and decentralized way. And we haven't like quite candidly, we haven't figured it out yet, which is you know, why you don't see me on Twitter really promoting this project all that much, but we're working on doing it in a way that's self-sovereign and privacy preserving. And if you have any questions, please reach out on Twitter or on email, happy to dive in on specifics. Great, thanks a lot. And just a reminder, we'll be collating a lot of these questions and sending them along to the speakers in case, so you can still continue to drop questions in the chat. Um, and now I'd like to thank Kevin again for a very interesting presentation. And...